Hey, trucked up guys and gals. In this video, we're going to go over 10 of the most compelling reasons to consider an F-150 Lightning truck as your next pickup. No, Ford isn't mailing me commission checks or any kind of affiliation perks or any of that kind of stuff at all. I I'm not a secret operative for auto unions. Joe Biden, or tree humper leftists. And no, I don't get paid by a major battery manufacturer, although that would be really nice, and I am open to bribery. But come on, I mean really, who in their right mind would throw serious ad dollars and sales efforts at a little YouTuber gig like this? Please send me money. Okay, everything's fine. I'm fine. I'm going to focus on the F-150 Lightning exclusively because, well, that's what I own and I can speak from first-hand experience. Isn't it irritating when people jabber on like some kind of authority on a product they've never even experienced in any significant way? Okay, but I'm turning a new leaf. What's really surprising is how many of these incredibly positive truck features are never considered by potential owners. What's more shocking, is how many people mention these as the reasons they avoid buying an electric truck. So let's dispel the FUD chuckers, get totally trucked up, and celebrate these top 10 reasons to own an F-150 Lightning right now. We kick off number 10 with what might come as a bit of a surprise, and that's Price. Since the F-150 Lightning came to market, we've heard about how these trucks are only for the rich. And that the automakers, and more notably the dealerships, have cranked prices so high that no working class folk could ever hope to own one. I would agree with the skeptics regarding vehicles like the GMC Hummer and the Rivian R1T, since the products were originally tailored to the more affluent buyer and were never designed as standard pickups, but instead to showcase how extreme and insane and amazing an electric truck could be. But the narrative has shifted. What we're hearing from naysayers now is that no one is buying lightnings, demand is plummeting, and dealer lots are full of unsold units stacked on top of each other, ready to self-combust. Overlooking the fact that February 2024 sales of the lightning went up 91% over the previous February. But let's look at these claims because it can't be both. Are they outrageously unaffordable and way more expensive than their gas counterpart? Or has demand crashed so badly that you can buy one of these things for the same price as an auto wrecker special with missing parts? Oh, don't worry about that, we'll fix it. The latter would be freaking awesome actually. As I pointed out in a previous video, I'll provide a link near the end, I want demand to fall or dealers to panic because pff, I want a good deal. So. I went on both Ford.com and Canada's Ford.ca sites, and I did a build and price. For convenience, I'll use the US example and look apples to apples with all the same packaging and using the more powerful 5 liter V8 gas variant to try and at least come within a moonshot of Lightning's power and torque, which it doesn't even touch, but we'll get to that. The Lightning is actually cheaper in a standard range than the gas version. And if you step up to the fully outfitted extended range, then you're looking at about $14,000 more. But that doesn't tell us much about how much cash actually comes out of your wallet for either of them. Factor in just the federal incentives. In the United States, we have some in Canada, but let's focus on the US incentives, along with Ford's current offering of $7,500 cash back on the extended package, and either version becomes the same or less than any available XLT gas trim you can configure. And until now, I haven't even mentioned the Base Trim Lightning Pro, which absolutely blows the doors off of all of these and has no comparable gas version in the Base Gas XL trim. Not even close. Let me know in the comments below if you would like me to do a video exclusively on the Pro. But that still isn't the end of it. Depending on which U.S. state or Canadian province you live in, there's even more money available. In Canada, you got that federal incentive of about 5,000 bucks and a lot more in most provinces on top of that. Where I live in British Columbia, it's an additional 4,000 bucks for that truck. So for me, nine grand in the pocket before you buy. Woo! No matter how you slice it, currently, it's cheaper to buy a Lightning XLT than a gas XLT. 
in any motor configuration that is comparable. That's a pretty attractive reason to add the Lightning to your truck shopping list. But just for added fun, let's play on the tropes, okay? On that narrative that these things are, aren't selling. Is Ford suffering on these things? I sure hope so. All the better for you and me, the buyer. Anecdotally, many dealers are willing to sell these things at discounts in the U.S. We're not seeing that in Canada, but supposedly long gone are the cursed market adjustments slapped on your EV truck purchase on top of an already inflated MSRP. So there's a good reason why people still think these things are expensive. And the first adopters that were willing to pay absolutely stupid amounts of money to be the first at everything are, well, now officially uh, first at everything, and no one gives a crap. So now the reality is here. Maybe you can knock that price down even further and bag yourself the cheapest EV truck ever sold. Score! If you succeed in wrangling some kind of coup d'etat, I want to hear about it below. Let me know in the comments. Number nine. So I got a question for you. When's the last time you fueled your gas XLT at your house? That's a lot of jerry cans. The amazing convenience of basically having the equivalent of a gas station at your house cannot be overstated. If you get the extended range, it comes with an incredibly fast level two charger that pumps out a whopping 80 amps via the Ford Charge Station Pro. That's faster than almost any consumer AC level two charging unit on the market today, even faster than many so-called DC fast chargers in my region. Again, we hear about how long these things take to charge. That's not how most people drive their trucks, gas or electric anyway. But at this rate, even if you are close to drained, you'll wake up every morning with a full truck if you so choose. I don't have this thing at my house since my Lightning is just a standard range. And yet, even with my 30 amp level two charger from Ford, there has never been a morning where I haven't woken up to a full truck and been ready to go to work. But some of you are probably saying, yeah, but uh, what about the power outages? We'll get to that later, and again, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Home charging is not only about incredible convenience. It's way cheaper than filling up that gas XLT with flammable go-go juice at the local pump. That leads us to the number eight reason to own a Lightning. I mean, are you as sick of being bilked at the pump as I was by a limited number of oil and gas giants who seem to always have their prices, oh, kind of around the same rates as if the price is almost coordinated some way, you know, in a so-called free market economy. Strange, funny, bizarre. In any case, I don't seem to miss it. Based on your area, and many regions are different, but for the most part, the savings over gasoline by home charging, especially if you are in an area with non-peak overnight rates, it's massive. Our utility is going to go to an overnight rate of eight cents per kilowatt in June of 2024. Let's just work out what that means. Typically, it's a 20 to 80% charge that most people do. I have only required jacking mine at home to 100% several times since buying the truck in October of 2023. But let's just say you do. Heck, let's, let's go even further. Let's say you drain your batteries to zero because you're some kind of crazy nutcase and you love to live on the edge and you just make it up your driveway and, and you just, just, you know, run out of power as you pull up to your, your charging unit at your house and you need 100% the following morning. So just doing a rough calculation with 131 kilowatt hour battery in the extended range XLT, we're looking at eight cents times 131 for a total of $10.48. That same 320 miles or 515 kilometers in a gas XLT is going to cost you at the average US gas price today, which as of this recording was $3.47 US, works out to the following. Five liter V8 at 17 miles per gallon at $3.47 US per gallon equals 20.4 cents per mile. Well, over 320 miles, that's $65.28 US versus $10.48 US for the same distance via home charging your lightning. And that's every single time you fill up. It doesn't take a mathematician to see how this is a huge savings. In Canada, my savings are even higher since gasoline is more, but it gets even better. Can your gas bail you out if the power goes down? As I mentioned earlier, we often hear about these things as a problem during a power outage. In actuality, 
This is number seven reason for owning one because in practice, it is quite the opposite. On top of the huge benefits of waking up every morning to a full truck at home, there's the option of hooking this thing up and powering your house right back again in the case of an outage. Moving a truck through the air and uphill, etc., requires a lot of electrons but charging a house is actually less. Based on the average household use of electricity in North America, the extended range lightning could power your entire house for three freaking days and still drive another 50 miles when the power comes back on before even having to charge up. Ford claims that by limiting use, one could technically keep a household up and running, bare basics, for 10 days. Also, in major power outages, Gas stations, they have issues themselves keeping their pumps running and have resorted to many of these places having to have generators to keep things going. Some charging stations, such as Tesla, do something similar, which means that when the power is out, at least a number of chargers will still be online for hours or even days. Some systems even incorporate solar roofs over the charging stations to self-power a portion of the charging capacity. And, and this is just in its infancy. These are just baby steps. In other words, one could even find a charging station during the middle of a power outage and extend their range and also the charging of their house even further. But what about uh, all those deep freeze traffic jams we hear about? Always cited as a negative, this is number six reason for owning an electric truck if you live in a cold area. In every test, EV trucks far outlasted an internal combustion truck if left idling in extreme cold. Why? A motor has to be continually running through the combustion cycle, whereas an EV doesn't. Along with around 90% efficiency for EV trucks and only 30% efficiency for ICE trucks from the energy it contains and stores, it doesn't take much gray matter upstairs to run the odds. And that leads to number five. With Ford making a bit of a breakthrough that totally changes the 2024 Lightning lineup. In fact, I'm kind of jealous. But before I get there, I'm working around the clock in addition to my full-time job to get this channel to a thousand subscribers. And I can't believe the outpouring of support already. You trucked up guys and gals rock, man. Only a few percentage, unfortunately, of YouTube viewers ever click the like button and even less subscribe. But that is how channels like mine survive. If you'd like more trucked up videos, there's a lot of content already in the works. Please like, subscribe, and click that bell notification icon below. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Back to number five. Say goodbye to resistive heaters and electron gobbling HVAC systems. Ford has added what is called a vapor injection heat pump. Sounds like something one might uh, find in a dimly lit pole dancing pit in Amsterdam's red light district, but I digress. And, and I wouldn't know anything about that anyway. Ooh. You can feel a lot easier about that winter range since this invention dramatically improves the management of heating and cooling throughout the cabin, the electric motors, and the battery packs. Here's what Ford had to say about these amazing additions. We are continuously working to improve the energy consumption of our electric vehicles. When we launched the Lightning, we balanced what was technically ready, could be optimized, and deliver the best value while developing the truck. Our engineers are chasing every mile to enhance efficiency, and they've been hard at work since we launched the F-150 Lightning in 2022 to bring a heat pump to market that fits the needs of our customers. Ford's Vapor Injection Heat Pump, or v <laughs> Hip. I hate acronyms. The stupidest thing ever. Anyway, it's designed to turbocharge the refrigerant system to help improve heat transfer capability and reduce power consumption. Sounds very jargonish and technical, but I kind of get the drift. Anyway, let's move on. Remember back at number eight when I spoke of flammable go-go juice at gas stations? And a few of you went, hey, oh, hold on. EVs are catching fire and burning down entire villages and women and children are running in the streets on fire going off like landmines and burning in the streets for months because no one can put them out. And so hide your children from their evil carnage, et cetera, et cetera. Number four is about owning one of the safest trucks ever made. Yeah, you heard that right. First, internal combustion vehicles are eight times more likely to catch on fire and cause an injury or death than these things. The F-150 Lightning, along with the Rivian R1T, are a couple of the safest trucks, both electric trucks, 
ever tested, unlike gas trucks and SUVs, these things are incredibly difficult to roll over. Even better, the huge space under that frunk, well, that lacks an engine, right? It also provides for advanced crumple zones. Because of this and other advanced features, the 2023 F-150 Lightning, the last one tested, received the highest possible five-star overall safety rating from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. That's the Meanwhile, the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety has... Why? The words aren't that long. Are we afraid of syllables? I, I, I hate acronyms. Anyway, named the 2023 F-150 Lightning in 2022. I don't know. A top safety pick. Anyway, it's good. That's a good reason to buy a truck right there, I think. Especially if you've got kids, if you're doing a lot of driving and you're thinking about safety. Number three is the F-150 Lightning's comfort and ride. Man, You've never driven in a pickup truck like this before. It's a huge plus that just doesn't get the attention it deserves. Especially like for me, I came from a 2007 Ford Ranger that, you know, was starting to lose parts at high speeds. To this, it just mind-blowing. Not only is this Ford's first F-150 with a fully independent rear suspension, but the almost perfect 50-50 weight distribution between front and back makes this truck a dream to drive. With four drive modes, excellent one-pedal driving that's just perfect. It's sensitive and it also makes electricity whenever you take your foot off the gas. Added bonus. Oh, what am I doing going down this hill right now? I'm making fuel. It's got a very low center of gravity and almost complete silence in the cabin. I can't believe it, how, how, how amazing this thing is. I sometimes feel like I'm in a Cadillac instead of a truck. It's responsive and agile, especially for a truck that weighs this much. You know, you'd never know it. Even with its hefty weight, I'm just not noticing it in the corners. This thing is a pleasure to drive on any short or long haul trip. It's just impossible to ignore the next advantages over a gas XLT. And a great reason to own an F-150 Lightning. Each one of these could be in the top 10 list on its own, but we're going to group them all for number two. The frunk is insanely useful and cavernous and turns a pickup into everything that you would usually find you know, in an SUV or crossover, along with the flip-up seats in the back, a full-size bed with the auto drop-down tailgate and step for convenient access, and loads of room in the center console and in each door. But there's so much more. Having power everywhere, you don't realize what it's like until you have it and then you don't. It's just fantastic. I've yet to use the 220 outlet plug in the back bed, but I will be in several future episodes, but often use the front and interior plugs. They're just so handy to have there. You just can't get that kind of versatility, power, and insane user applications out of an internal combustion pickup truck. Oh, here you are again. <laughs> Number one is by far the feeling of its capabilities. That sounds really vague, but it's not. If I just talked about capabilities, it doesn't do it justice. Tapping that accelerator pedal and feeling the instant torque of two electric powerhouses front and back launch you forward in such harmony is a feeling I've never experienced in any gas truck, even modded out performance variants. Yes. There's the insane speed. We've all heard about this ad nauseum from electric vehicles. This is Ford's fastest truck, even putting the Raptor to shame. But that goes without saying. It's the combination of these things that you're in a truck that is so capable. But Ford has impressively married all these electric elements. And that's what's truly impressive. There is a sense of quiet, powerful confidence in its road creds. And once you've driven one for any period of time and you get back into a gas truck, I'm sorry, man, but for me, there's no going back. Sure, there are negatives, lots of them, and every potential owner should weigh it all in. They should know about every positive and every negative that they can find. And if you'd like to learn about the 10 boo-boos that I found, or why diesel truck guys think EV trucks absolutely suck, Click the links here. Thanks for watching.